Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install NSPs and a variety of other file formats over Wi-Fi using a RU installer alongside NSUSB Loader. So NSUSB Loader is a program that's used to communicate with various NSP installation programs on your Switch, including a RU installer and tinfoil. Installing files over Wi-Fi has many advantages, including that it'll take up less SD card space since you don't need to copy the NSP files to your SD card originally, it's just going to install them straight from your PC onto your Switch. You also don't need to split any files that are bigger than 4 gigabytes, which a lot of NSP files might be if it's a pretty large game, and for FAT32 formatted SD cards that can be a problem. It's also just going to be faster since LAN installations are capable of reaching much higher speeds than just normal SD card speed. Especially since if you installed it straight from your SD card, it would be simultaneously reading and and writing data to your SD card, which would slow things down significantly. Now before I go any farther, I should also mention that you do need some kind of custom firmware on your Switch, preferably Atmosphere, and I'm going to have a link to this in the video description to where you can get this installed if you don't already have a CFW installed on your Switch. So with all that out of the way, I think we're all ready to get started on this. So to start off, what you're going to want to do is just go to this GitHub link, which I'll have linked in the video description as always, and we're just going to go over to the releases tab of the Awu installer page, and just download the latest release of it. So as you can see, it's just downloading right away, and there it is. Next, what we're going to want to do is just go over to the next GitHub link that I'll also have linked in the video description. And this one, instead of just going straight to the releases tab, we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to find the Java JRE link. So here it is, right under the Windows section, and it mentions that we need 8U60 or higher. And at the time of making this video, if we just click on this link, go to Java Download, and click Agree and Start Free Download, it's going to download 8U251, which is definitely a lot more recent than 8U60, so this should be good to get the job done. And that's actually all the dependencies that we need, so we can just scroll up now, go over to the Releases tab, and download the latest release of NS USB Loader. We're not going to download the legacy version since we don't need that. This normal version will be enough to get the job done. If you get this message, this will always come up if you download any JIR file on Google Chrome, so you can just ignore that. If you don't trust the file, just throw it in VirusTotal and it'll tell you it's clean. So yeah, that is actually all the files that we need to download. So I'm just going to go over into my download section, and we should see all of the files in here now. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just get the Awu installer onto our Switch's SD card. So I'm going to go inside of this zip folder and just copy this Switch folder straight to my micro SD card from my Switch. So as you can see, this is my Switch's micro SD card. I've got the Atmosphere folder and the Switch folder. So if I just drag this straight onto it like this, it's going to automatically merge itself with this Switch folder. And we should see Awu installer inside of here. So yep, here it is, and that means our SD card is actually all set up for this. There's actually no other files that we need to put on here. However, if you do want to just do a normal SD card install, not over USB or LAN, you can just copy the NSP files into any folder. You could just create a folder called NSPs and put them all in there if you want, and that'll be enough to get the job done. But like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, installing over LAN does have significant advantages, so I'm going to be showing you how to do that in this video. So I'm not going to be copying any NSP files to my SD card. Next, what we're going to want to do is just install this Java JRE. I already have this installed since I've done this before, but if this is your first time doing this, you'll definitely want to install this. It's a very easy and straightforward installation, so hopefully there should be no problems with that. Once you've got it installed, just restart your PC, and then you should see uh, the Java icon show up on top of this JIR file. And then when you're ready, you can just double click on this application to launch it, and you should launch straight into NSUSB Loader. So from here, we do have a little bit of configuration to do, but it should be pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is just go over to this gear icon, and we're going to select allow XCI slash NSC slash NCZ files selection for tinfoil. That was a mouthful. You're going to want to enable this if you plan on using uh, NSZ files or XCI files, but if you're just using NSP files, you don't really need to enable this. So that is actually all the setup that we need for NSD USB loader. So I'm just going to get my Switch's micro SD card back into my Switch, and then I'm going to launch into Atmosphere. 
So I'm just going to eject it like this and then put it back into my switch and I'll meet you on my switch. So as you can see, I'm on my switch now and I'm booted into Atmosphere. So now what you want to do is make sure your switch and your PC are on the same Wi-Fi network. It should be pretty self-explanatory to check this, but if you just want to check it an easy way is just to go to System Settings, go to Internet, and then look at what it says for the wireless network. Now on your PC, you're going to do the same thing, just go over to the bottom and you should be connected to the same network. So luckily for me, I'm already connected to the same network, so I don't have anything to do. And now what we're going to do is go into the Homebrew Launcher. So instead of launching it over the album icon like you would normally do, I'm going to launch it over YouTube just to give it some more memory and just to make it more stable. So to launch the Homebrew Launcher over a different application, you're going to hold down the R button as you launch the application. So right now I'm holding down the R button and I just press the A button to launch YouTube and there it goes. Launches you straight into the Homebrew Launcher. So now we can scroll straight over to our Roo installer and just launch this normally. So from here, you can either configure some of the settings or just leave them all as they are. The settings the way they are are completely fine, but if you want to change any of these things, feel free to go ahead and do that first. But my settings are already the way I like them, so I don't really have much to do there. So next, what we're going to do is scroll up and go over to the Install Over LAN or Internet tab. If we click on that, it'll say Waiting for a Connection and it'll tell you your Switch's IP address. So I'm just going to put my controller down and get back on my PC for a minute while this is still on this tab. So if we go over to the first tab in NS USB Loader, we have an option for USB or Net. I'm going to change this to Net and then I'm going to enter my Switch's IP address in here. So it just tells you what your Switch's ad address is on screen, so we can just copy that down exactly as it is, and uh, we should be all set. And once you've got that all typed in, then we're good to go and select the NSP files. So we can just go over here down to Select Files, and it's going to bring up a selection menu which will allow you to select any NSP file. So I'm just going to do that real quick. As you can see, these are my NSP files that I'm going to be installing. Both of them are very big files, so I definitely don't want to do this on my SD card. Since that would require me to split both of these files, since my SD card is FAT32. So we can just select both of these files by highlighting them like this, and then go to the Open button. And now they are both on here. So now once you've got all your NSP files selected that you want to install, you can just go over to the Upload to NS button down here. So now on our Wu installer, you're going to see the files come up over here, and we can go on to our switch, and we can select both of these files. Once you've got all the files selected that you want to install, just press the plus button to install the files. It's going to give you an option to install to the SD card or to install to the internal storage. I'm just going to choose SD card since I have a lot more space available on here. So right now it's downloading the NSPs from my PC and installing them on my Switch. So this is the speed it's currently transferring at. Right now it's going at about 3 megabytes per second, which is definitely a pretty acceptable speed, especially considering the connection quality quality that I have right now, which is not very good. While this is installing, I figured I might as well just give you another tip to get better connection quality. Let me just hide my capture card real quick while this is doing that. One way to get better connection quality is to just create a mobile hotspot on Windows 10. So by clicking this button, this will open up a mobile hotspot, and then from here you can right click on it, go to settings, and then on here you can configure the hotspot exactly as you want it. So when you connect your switch to this hotspot, it's going to say that IP address right here, and then this is the IP address that you would enter into NSUSB loader. If your switch is right next to your PC, this can definitely help to increase the speeds quite a bit. So hopefully you can test that out and give that a chance and see how it works for you. But like I said, for me, I'm just going to leave it how it is now since I'm completely fine with the way it's running now. So these are going to take quite a while to install, especially considering the size of the files that I chose to install. So I'm just going to wait for these to get done and I'll get back to you when they're done. Alright, so my Switch just got done installing the files. As you can see, it says two files installed successfully. So we can just press OK to close out of that menu. And then we're pretty much all done with this application. So if you're all done installing the files that you need, you can just click exit to close out of the application and it'll put you back into the homebrew launcher. So to close out of this, we can just press the home menu and as you can see, the game is now installed right here on my uh, Switch. So I'm just going to close out of this since I don't need it anymore. And if we go to the plus button, we can see this is the full game. 
and it should be on the latest update. Yep, you're using the latest version of the software. That's because I installed the update along with it. As you can see, that was the second uh, file that I installed, and the first one was the base game. So, yeah, I'm all up to date on this game, and I can play this game completely normally, just how I would play uh, any other game on my Switch. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if this video helped you. Comment if you have questions or if you want to help anyone else out with this. And subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I'll see you next time.